to him with their hurts. And it was just so tenderly cleaning and bandaging their wounds. And the thing was, he, there was actually no condemnation as he was doing this. Because he knew the weakness, he knew the brokenness, and he knew the suffering of humanity. It was just, I just, it was just so understanding. He was just so, so tender, and just knew the individual pain of each and every single person as he dressed their wounds. So Jesus knows the pains of being human. He knows the suffering, and he knows your suffering and your pain. We see that in Hebrews 4, 15 to 16. We do not have a high priest who cannot sympathise with our weaknesses, but was in all points tempted as we are, yet without sin. Let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in the time of need. So Jesus experienced what it was like to be human, yet he was sinless. So he could be our sin substitute before a holy God, just like we've just heard, right? We can now boldly come in through his throne of grace. And Jesus knew the solution. It's himself. And he did that all because of his love and his compassion for us. So he's actually given us a way to remember all of that goodness, <laughs> what he's done for us, and that's in communion. You might know it as the Lord's Supper. It was like the last meal um, before he... Um, uh, the Lord's Supper, the Last Supper, when he had with the, um, with the apostles there, the disciples, on that night just before he was crucified. He knew what he was about to endure. It was his suffering for our suffering, so that we could stand before a holy, loving God. And it was all because of his love that he did that. It was the joy that he had that he did that. So in Matthew 26, 26 to 28, and as they were eating, Jesus took bread blessed and broken and gave it to the disciples and said, take and eat, this is my body. Then he took the cup and he gave thanks and he gave it to them saying, drink from it all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for many for the remission of sins. So we know in Luke 22, 19 to 1 Corinthians 11, 24 and 25, Jesus said to have communion in remembrance of him. So we remember today. Actually, on page 21, see him being all teacherish now, aren't I? Um, we can see the actual the results um, here of what Jesus did on the cross and his resurrection. So it's already been covered, but I'll just share it again. The result of what Jesus did on the, um, on the cross. It shows that you are infinitely valuable to God. Jesus is the supreme example of love. God is not aloof from suffering. The powers of evil have been defeated. The resurrection wasn't the reversal of a defeat. It was the manifestation of a victory. So the partition has been removed. We've got reconciliation with God and in other relationships. The penalty has been paid, just as if we'd never sinned. The power of sin has been broken. And if the sun sets you free, you wearily will be free. The power of um, the pollution has been removed. The blood of Jesus cleanses us from all sin. And when you're forgiven, you want to forgive. And we see and read in 1 Corinthians 11.26, For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death till he comes. So we have communion to remember what he's done. We remember and we declare his death and his victory until he returns to the earth. He is alive. His love wins. We have hope, we have forgiveness, and we have God who understands and loves us and loves us just so, so much. So if you just want to take the bread and the cup in your hands there, we'll pray. Lord, we thank you for your compassion on us as humans. We thank you that you provided a solution to our problem of sin and that you provided Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for saying yes for humanity's sake. We remember what you did, Jesus, and we proclaim your death and your victory until you return to the earth. 